In this video, I'm going to go through um, not a proof, but the idea behind a theorem that it ensures for us or uh, gives us conditions on which we actually can be sure there will be a solution and um, that that solution is unique. So um, I'm going to sort of jump around. Well, first I'll read through this whole definition and then I'll sort of give you some drawings to give you the idea of what's going on. So consider that we have a function f and that's going to be the right-hand side of our differential equation. So, so far we've talked, uh, well, I guess we've talked about a lot of different things. So let me, let me keep going through this. So um, this function f, if it's continuous, it, it's, the function is continuous and its derivative with respect to y are both continuous in some rectangle. So the way we can think about this is if we have the plane here with t on this direction and y in this direction. So there's a whole plane of y and t values, and f is a surface above this plane, and it gives you the slope of y at any t y coordinate in the plane. So if you're along some solution like this, and you pick a point here, and you want to know what should the slope be, before you have a curve going through that, you're just saying, like, if I had a solution going through this point, how steep should it be? So you look at the surface above it to evaluating this f function, and that value tells you what the slope should be. And so that's the function f that we're talking about. And if this f is a nice continuous function, then um, on some interval, so I'm going to draw an alpha here and a beta here and a gamma here and a delta here. And so if I draw this box, I'm just going to look at a little window in this box, in this whole plane, just inside this box. So if f is nice and continuous and its derivative with respect to y is continuous in a box like this, and we have an initial condition at some point t0, comma y0, then in some interval around t, so there's some little interval that's smaller then it's not as far away as alpha or beta. So I have some little interval here, at least. And often that interval extends maybe to the entire alpha and beta, but at least some little interval. There is a solution, and it's unique to the initial value problem where I have to solve the ODE and go through that point. The initial condition is that point, and the y prime equation is the ODE. So, and that's going to, you know, the only guarantee we have, the solution may continue beyond that, but the only guarantee we have is for a little while at least. And what that means is that we won't be stuck right away. We're, we, we can find a, a solution that takes us at least a little ways away from T0. So to show how this works when it works is not as interesting as to remind you about some equations, or at least one equation that we've seen where this fails. So recall, we had a y prime equal 1 over cosine y. And we found that the solutions to this equation, um, let's see, we had one that looked like the initial condition y0, y0 equals 0 was a curve that went through here and looks just like an arc sine function. And then we had another one that went through um, y0 equal, what was it, my, was equal to 2, and that one was a curve like this. And in both cases, we did not have a long-lasting solution. So 1 over cosine of y is a function of y. It's smooth, and its derivative is smooth, but not for very far. Cosine has trouble at pi over 2. And the derivative of it, sine, uh, oh, well, that doesn't end up in the denominator. But that's a, the problem. The, the one problem we definitely have is if we, if we define f of t and y to be 1 over cosine, so there's no dependence on t explicitly here. So the t is just sort of carried around to make it look like the theorem's conditions. But this function here is not continuous all the way past pi over 2. And so the only thing we can be sure of is that the solution will exist. In fact, the, the, the theorem that I just stated says it'll only exist for sure on some small interval. In this case, it turns out that it makes it all the way up to pi over 2, but it doesn't go any further. 
So this is the type of scenario, this type of equation is the type that um, we still get something out of this existence and uniqueness result, but you can see why it fails to exist forever. You know, the exponential solutions that we got to the linear um, equations, those ones existed forever because the linear right-hand side was always continuous, and its derivatives were always continuous, so we could go on forever. But this one has problems. Okay, so that's all I want to say about this existence and uniqueness theorem.